Maybe it is better to email me and ask me for uh, advice. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Simoncini, Tullio Simoncini, and uh, I, I'm, I come from Rome, Italy. I'm an oncologist. Uh, the, 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 the biggest problem, in my opinion, in the world is uh, the idea that is wrong. All the genetics, molecules, receptors, intracellular uh, processes are just an illusion. It is about 100 years that scientists uh, and uh, researchers tell this uh, strange story, this, this uh, mystery. We can explain everything with these uh, this concepts, but we don't uh, get rid of, any, of anything. Nine million, about nine million people, patients dying from cancer per year are the big proof that the oncology, actual oncologist, is completely failed. Why? Uh, there is all the system that is built just to pursue a chemical therapies. And uh, nobody cares about the real cause of cancer. But if you just think about the cancer, what is a cancer? We speak, everybody speaks uh, about cancer. And everybody is used to think of cancer about enzymes, cells, uh, or molecules, phosphatase, kinase, what are they? Nobody knows. But if you see, if you, if you enter into the organism and you, you are careful to see what is inside the organism when there is a cancer, you always find that is white. All the scientists find in the oncologic world the candida species infection in cancer patients. When they die, they are all invaded uh, by the fungi. But nobody wonders that this is the only microorganism present in cancer patients. Com persistent, constant, persistent. You can, you always find the fungus in, in cancer patients. So the the oncologists and uh, scientists say, because the cancer invades the organism, it gets weak, weak, and the candida that is opportunistic invade the, um, the the organism. On the contrary, I say that the candida enters to the, the organism, uh, make, makes the cancer, destroy the organism, then explode, explodes everywhere. And uh, um, moreover, what is a cancer? It's a mass. But when you say tumor, you say just something that you are describing exteriorly. You don't say the cause. But what does it cause, this tumor? This is the problem. Uh, this is a mass because this is an infection that is quite different from the uh, bacterial infection. And this is the problem of the researchers. This is like a solid abscess. If the, an infection uh, is, a, is made by streptococcus, uh, streptococcus, staphylococcus, you see the abscess, the liquid inside. But every element is uh, separated, so they don't produce a mass. Fungi, they gather, they, jo they join, they, they make a big uh, colony, and the reaction to defend its, uh, of, the organ of the organism to defend itself makes the, the, the cancer, the tumor. So it, it is a solid abscess. But not all the infections are bacteria. There are also the fungi. Viruses, smaller. Fungi, bigger. And fungi are the connecting point from the microorganism and the animals. So they can enter in, in a body. 
like uh, microorganisms. And they can aggregate once they are inside, and they can form, they can build a, a big mass that has the power of uh, an animal. It, the first thing is uh, the ideology, the theory, the, the subject that is false. We have to abandon completely the genetic, the, the theory of genetics on cancer. But that involves that all the chemical industries now, all the researchers, they smash down. That's why we have to fight all the, day, all the days against a, a, a failed system, oppressive system, because the powers, the system tries to, uh, to continue. This is a, deal, a problem of interest, power, and so on. But people conti continue to die, so something has to be done. Today, the official oncology have no subject because they have a million, 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 million of hyp hypotheses never demonstrated. Also, the alternative people try to, to help people uh, with the supplements, with the whatever, vitamins, but there is no and I, a leading idea. Now you have to know, just I want to finish. Take a look to another point of view on cancer. Notice the, the testimonies and beware of official therapies because they most of most of the time they can just kill people. Tullio Simoncini, an Italian oncologist who finds himself in the middle of a storm after having declared that the origin of cancer is not genetic, but it is due to the aggression of a fungus called Candida albicans. Based on this hypothesis, Dr. Simoncini treats cancer with sodium bicarbonate, which is one of the strongest enemies of fungi in nature. How does a fungus get in the body? Where do you think this all starts from years of research? There is an endemy, a big epi epidemic pollution because the fungus is undervalued. But it, it, it is undervalued because it is not understood. From the very beginning of his studies, Dr. Simoncini felt the need to reconsider the cancer paradigm from scratch and began looking for a different origin of the disease. What puzzled him the most was the fact that all tumors behave in the same way, even though they appear completely different from one another. Then he started looking for a common denominator and eventually found one. Most cancers appear white. These tumor specimens show the devastating impact the disease can have on the body. This is a liver riddled with cancer. The white bubbles are all tumors. If you enter the body and uh, you reach an organ affected, affected by the cancer, you can see that uh, the lumps are always white. Sometimes it is covered mm, with blood or with the, the, the defense reaction, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. In every post-mortem ex examination, uh, scientists find the white lumps, the white masses, that is fungi. This is uh, the pleura. We entered with a camera and look, the pleura should be red, but you can see all the lumps, all the cancer that is white. This is a heartbeat. This is a bronchial cancer. Look, we, we went into the bronchial. Look, they mm. are white. And then in the colon cancer. This is red because there is a little bit blood. I washed it up now. Look, look, it is always white. White like Candida. Candida albicans in Latin means glowing white. It should be clarified that the presence of fungi in tumors is nothing new in the medical world. All the scientists find in the oncologic world the cancer patients, when they die, they are all invaded by the fungi, but nobody wonders that this is the only microorganism present in cancer patients. Official oncology, however, believes that their presence in tumors is due to their opportunistic nature, which brings them to build colonies wherever they find a suitable environment. 
This belief, though, seems contradicted by a careful observation of the animal world. Spores from a parasitic fungus called Caudiceps have infiltrated this ant's body and mind. As soon as she is discovered by the workers, the ant is taken away and dumped far away from the colony. It seems extreme, but this is the reason why. After a while, the fruiting body of the caudiceps erupts from the ant's head. It can take three weeks to grow, and when finished, the deadly spores will burst from its tip. Then, any ant in the vicinity will be in serious risk of death. The fungus is so virulent, it can wipe out whole colonies of ants. And it's not just ants that fall victims to this killer. In this case, it was the fungus that caused the ant's death, not the death of the ant to invite the presence of the fungus. What normally appears to be a simple opportunist is in fact a full-fledged assassin. Allora viene il dubbio, non sarà che viene prima debilita l'organismo e poi nel momento in cui la si vede è il momento della massima invasione? Chi ci dice che sia solamente un post hoc? Il fatto che ci sia è un dato di fatto, il fatto che sia un post hoc è un'interpretazione. Not all infections are bacteria, there are also the fungi. Viruses, smaller, fungi, bigger. And fungi are the connecting point from the microorganism and the animals. So they can enter in a body like a microorganism and they can aggregate once they are inside and they can build a, a big mass that has the power of uh, an animal. Candida is a very familiar fungus, known especially to women, who sometimes experience an infection in their sexual organs. The vagina is a muscular canal that leads from the outside of the body to the uterus. The warmth and moisture of this canal create a perfect environment for microorganisms to breathe. For example, bacteria called lactobacilli, which are naturally present in the vagina, coexist with a yeast fungus called Candida albicans. Normally, the lactobacilli create an acidic environment that keeps the natural yeast population in balance. However, when conditions within the vagina change that either decrease the numbers of lactobacilli or decrease the acidity, these yeast fungi begin to multiply. Normally, the immune system keeps the fungi under control and doesn't allow them to establish colonies in your body. This white cell spots a fungus in the bloodstream, attacks it, and destroys it. If the system's defenses instead get lower than usual, the candida can manage to aggregate into small colonies practically everywhere in the body. In the moment in which a fungus enters into the tissue, the part interna of the organism, which is called candida sintima, evoca a reaction of the immunity cellular that leads to the formation of the tumor. The tumor, according to me, would be the ensemble dell'invasione invasion of the fungina plus a reaction Far from being a wild, uncontrolled cellular replication, according to Simoncini, the growth of a tumor is a lucid and desperate reaction from the organism in an extreme attempt to reject the intruder. By the same token, Dr. Simoncini believes that metastasis are not cancerous cells that leave the primary tumor to go start a new one somewhere else, but small groups of fungi belonging to the primary tumor that fall into the bloodstream during biopsies or during a regular surgical operation. These runaway fungi settle in a new environment and prepare to take advantage of a weakened organism to establish their new colony. Once this propagation has started, it becomes necessary to restore the immune system to its maximum potency as soon as possible. If the patient is given chemotherapy instead, this only accelerates the destruction of his natural defenses, as the drug kills indiscriminately cancerous and healthy cells. 
while possibly prolonging the survival by a few months, chemotherapy makes it impossible for the organism to recover its defense capabilities, making it bound to succumb, sooner or later, to the multiplying fungal attacks. In order to test his theory, Dr. Simoncini began treating cancer with sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is the strongest uh, substance against uh, fung fungi. They cannot adapt to, the, to a salt because not, it is not a complex substance. That's why the, the, the antifungal drug, today's antifungal drugs are ineffective mm -hmm. because the fungi, fungi can adapt themselves in three, four days. For the fungus, you give an antifungal drug, you can, you can kill the first layer, but the second layer, they, are, uh, uh, they get used and they eat yes. drugs, chemotherapy, everything. Gennaro Sangermano is the first patient ever cured by Dr. Simoncini with sodium bicarbonate. In 1983 he was diagnosed with lung cancer and was given a life expectancy of six, seven months at best. In 2006, 23 years later, he gave this interview. Buonasera. Buonasera, io mi chiamo Massimo. Eh, mi sembra di parlare con una persona molto fortunata, mi sembra di capire, giusto? Eh sì, molto fortunata, veramente. Perché gli pensi... Molto fortunata, ma grazie a Dio, al dottore Simoncini. Non contrario con fortuna, perché mi hai detto che non è banato di copre. Ah. Perché la macchia si stava allargando quando sono andata alla visita. Ah. E ha detto, vieni da me, devo andare con la cura che mi ha dato a lui, con grazie a tutti. Dio. E... e ci ha messo, mi diceva la moglie, ci ha messo 8-9 mesi a guarire? Eh sì, oltre 9 mesi. Però se ne è andato via tutto il tumore. Sì, per grazie a Dio si hanno ritrovato che è andato via. Eh, non credere, però a me è andato bene. Eh, già è lì, infatti, c'è stato pur... eh, Ecco, perché mi ha detto che c'è stato lei ha detto che è stato via, addirittura. Lei non ha fatto nessun'altra cura insieme a Simoncini, cioè lei è sicuro che l'ha guarita questa cosa qua? Di, di... Sì, sì, sì. Non ha fatto nient'altro? Non ha fatto Simoncini, altri non sono andati. Uh, uh, Adesso solo da qui qualche volta qualche raffreddore, la febbre, mi hanno andato a medico. Vabbè, chiaro, è normale. Allora, comunque con la cura là non l'ha fatta solo lui. Non l'ha fatto nient'altro insieme? No, no. Oh, lo vedo, lo vedo. After a few successful treatments, Dr. Simoncini presented his documentation to the Italian Department of Health, hoping that his theory was put to test under proper scientific protocols. Not only were his findings completely ignored, but Dr. Simoncini ended up being disbarred from the Italian medical order for having prescribed cures that had not been approved by the authorities. The paradox is that Tullio Simoncini is not an alternative doctor, nor is he against the system at all, but he is possibly the most allopathic and orthodox of them all. I think that the strada to make the fungus out, out, and even the tumor sia quella di concepire degli antifungini a cascata sequenziale. Il concetto in chemioterapia esiste, le terapie eh, sequenziali fatte a cicli, eccetera, eccetera, perché bisognerebbe scogitare degli antifungini che sono eh, efficaci in un primo momento, come il fungo varia, cambiare l'antifungino in funzione della variazione del fungo, e così stanno di dietro secondo le variazioni, però dovrebbero venire in campo le case farmaceutiche in questo momento, perché adesso non capiscono questa, questo grosso affare che c'è sotto. Loro vedono la, casa, la, la multinazionale che fa, vede il pericolo dell'azzeramento eh, dell dei chemioterapi, eccetera, e fa guerra, fa, fa terreno bruciato a tutti, chi dice qualsiasi cosa gli taglia il collo. In the meantime, he has perfected special techniques that allow him to deliver the sodium bicarbonate next to the tumor in order to obtain the maximum effectiveness with the minimum amount of sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is effective if you can uh, put in contact the sodium bicarbonate with the cancer. So, if you want to reach the prostate cancer, you have to locate before a uh, catheter in the potenda artery that reaches the prostate. Then you can administer through a, a port cat connected to the, 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 the catheter the, the sodium bicarbonate directly to the prostate and kill fungi because the concentration of the, of the salt is very high because you used the artery that is directly feeding the, the, the organ. Instead, for the cavities, pleura, 
peritoneum, we have to, to, to locate a transperitoneal or, trans, or a pleural catheter. Although considered only anecdotal material and not scientific evidence, there are now dozens of fully documented testimonies which appear on Dr. Simoncini's website that seem to support the validity of his innovative approach to cancer. This therapy you're talking about, sodium bicarbonate delivered directly into the tumor site, I wonder where the harm is. Seems like a very harmless therapy. It isn't a potent, dangerous medicine. No, it's not, it's not dangerous because uh, there is a, a uh, remote uh, possibility of infection but there is the, the life on the other hand and then there are there are some type of cancer breast cancer doesn't need of the catheter bladder cancer brain cancer they are the breast and bladder cancer ha uh, with the sodium bicarbonate can heal in 99 percent without surgery without chemotherapy without radiotherapy and let the organs there. Dr. Simoncini believes that also skin cancers are caused by a fungus and treats them with regular iodine tincture. In some cases, patients have reported even the nastiest melanomas to fall off within weeks, like simple scabs. And the cancer is gone? Totally gone. For the first time, you know, I feel, you know, I feel like I got my life uh, back again. Not every cancer however, can be treated with the same effectiveness. Bone cancers, for example, receive hardly any blood at all and are very difficult to reach with the proper amount of sodium bicarbonate. Different techniques, in some cases, can be applied. Okay, my name is Rod Peterson. Uh, in June of 2008, I was uh, diagnosed uh, with a tumor in my right kidney and uh, it was uh, renal cell carcinoma. Uh, the doctor told me that I had the tumor was 6.7 centimeters. So in August of 2008, uh, I underwent an operation and they removed my right kidney. During March of 2009, they had found uh, uh, with the monitoring that the uh, renal cell carcinoma had actually moved into my, both of my lungs. After you did uh, your operation, did you do any cycles of uh, radiotherapy or chemotherapy or any of that? No. No, um, I did not. Uh, I was told it wasn't required. Okay. Uh, and uh, at that point, I went uh, to see my oncologist, and as he was explaining to me uh, what, what I had, I didn't really understand what I had. <laughs> I knew I had a cancer. What I thought is it was it was removed and I was going to be okay. Uh, he told me that the renal cell carcinoma had moved into my both of my lungs, and uh, when I was asking him, uh, "Okay, what's the solution?" he said he he indicated to me that normally they they either they can operate, take it out, or they can use uh, chemo, or they could use uh, radiation therapy, and uh, really. None of the above would work with the type of cancer that I had. Uh, Was this basically a, a nice way to tell you that you were going to die? Yes, <laughs> it was. He told me that uh, the operation doesn't work because it would spread further or it would just come back somewhere else. Chemo or radiation therapy would not work or would not be effective in this type of uh, uh, cancer. So basically he told me to go home and enjoy the rest of my life. He uh, gave me a card for the psychologist if I needed him, and, huh. and I left the office. So, Welcome to the medicine of the third millennium, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is like... was fairly, I was fairly uh, numb, so to speak. Um, after this great news, uh, what did you do? Well, I again I really didn't have a lot of options I didn't think uh, so I started talking to f the friends and I, I had heard about uh, Dr. Tullio Simoncini started doing research with uh, on Tullio, uh, Dr. Tullio Simoncini I realized after the research that that can't, I, I believed he, he his research was correct uh, that cancer is a fungus 
and it just started making sense. So I started following the fungus. Oh, let me stop you for a second. Uh, as you're not a doctor, based on what are you saying that this made sense to you? Well, as I'm looking, watching the videos and realizing, I started researching fungus. I started researching, and there's other information out there at, uh, from other doctors that are accredited doctors who are saying some of the same things that Tulio right. was saying. Right. Right? Um, so we decided to fly to Rome just to talk to uh, Dr. Simoncini in person. And uh, we actually flew to Rome in July of 2009. Uh, Tulio, uh, when, I, when I met Dr. Simoncini, he's, he's, you could tell he was a matter of fact. And we, we flew to Switzerland and met the associate. And I started the treatment. And it was back, I finally went to the treatment in August of 2009, and I was there for six weeks. And I now, went through the treatment. Sorry, you're talking about the Simoncini treatment? Yes. Uh, so this is basically under Simoncini's uh, supervision? Yes, absolutely. It was. And so we, after the treatment, I was curious. When I came back, I had my CT scans, and it was, you could clearly see for the past scans where the where the tumors were kept constantly growing all of a the sudden they had shrunk in some cases in half and substantially in other cases and this is this is after the first cycle after, let's say let's say yeah after the the treatment that I had in August <laughs> of course it was very exciting uh my doctors my oncologist was just ecstatic this is, he, uh, this is the same one who had told you to go home and relax? Yes, yeah. And then he started to say, well, you know, 1% of the population, this only happens with him. If it continues, we're going to have to do a write-up on you. Wait, wait a minute. Now, did you tell him that you were doing the bicarbonate? Uh, no, I did not. So, but I, I wanted to make sure uh, I could feel the difference after the C uh, Dr. Simoncini's treatment. So, in January and February of the of the following year, uh, 2010, I went back. To Switzerland, after, you mean? Yes, I took the first two weeks of treatment, and I went and I had a CT scan to, to follow up with my, because I was tracking it the whole time. Uh, and my tumors, again, had shrunk in half. Just after two weeks of a second cycle? Yes. So I continued with another two weeks of treatment and came back to uh, Canada. And uh, the tumors, the last CT scan, which the first one when I got, when I returned, uh, the tumors are, uh, they were gone. All there was was scar tissue. So basically, after two cycles, one in August uh, 2009 and one in January 2010? Yes. You got rid of your tumors? Yes. Completely? Yes. Well, so, what, did you, what did you think of then? <laughs> well, I was... I, because of uh, Dr. Simoncini, I have a second chance in life. And I, I believe everybody should have that. Now, just to follow up to make sure... Uh, I just came back from another CT scan, which is again, it's now been another three, it was three months. I'm still clear. This is the one you took in May 2010? Yes. And that confirmed that you were, that you, that you're still clear? Yes, it did. Uh, in fact, I remember when I was interviewing this uh, Swiss doctor a few months ago, he told me that there was a patient in Canada that uh, was under treatment, it was doing very well. They didn't know the final outcome yet, but uh, he said it was looking very good. Yeah, that was me. That was you. So it seems to be a very small world in a way, huh? <laughs> it does, yes. Now, just to make absolutely sure, did you, did you do any treatment at all, whether orthodox or not, between the first and the last cycle or during the first and the last cycle, besides the bicarbonate? In other words, can you be absolutely positive that the bicarbonate is what cured you oh, and nothing else? Yes, I can. There was no there was no treatment. Like I said, there was no treatment offered to me. Uh, what I was told was to go home, 
relax and enjoy the rest of your life. Okay. And I, fortunately, I have six children, seven grandchildren, and I and I wasn't really ready to do that. And uh, by uh, meeting uh, Dr. Simoncini, while well, I'm still here today, and I'm very thankful. I thank God for that. Also, we have had very good results with a patient from uh, Canada who had uh, a kidney uh, tumor with metastasis in the lungs. And uh, the, re the first result after one, one cure of four weeks were quite good. We have had 50% uh, less of uh, metastasis in the lungs. So this is a very good result. He should come back to pursue the treatment. Dr. Tullio Simoncini is an oncologist from Rome, Italy. He believes that cancer is caused by a fungus called Candida albicans and treats it with sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. His rate of success is very encouraging and many doctors in Europe are already adopting his protocols and therapy. Dr. Simoncini believes that also skin cancers are caused by the same fungus and treats them with iodine titer at a 7% solution. The same goes for psoriasis as well. Under the assumption that cancer is caused by this fungus, any kind of surgery, including biopsies, is to be avoided whenever possible, as it creates an opportunity for some of the colony members to escape into the bloodstream and nest elsewhere in the body, becoming a potential source for future metastases. Following are a few video testimonies from some of Dr. Simoncini's patients from all over the world. In 2004, Patricia Gordon found out she had cancer. They told me I had lymphoma. She set up an immediate uh, an appointment to have the top palate of my mouth removed. And they Patricia refused to undergo surgery and started a long quest for a different solution, going from doctor to doctor. But it was all in vain and after three years she realized she was just going around in circles. Over $2,000 for a PET scan, and it showed up a, a mass in my lung, my right lung, about the size of a medium potato. In the lung? In the right lung, yes. By this time, there was a tumor that started growing up around my right eye, and it basically was forcing my eyeball out to the right side of my head. So how did you find out about uh, Dr. Simoncini? I heard this radio show. It was the Robert Scott Bell radio show. He okay. talked about his alternative treatments and how the success rate was so great. And so when I went to the website, I immediately saw this is exactly what was happening to me because I experienced the white tumors coming down from the roof of my mouth and I got a hold of Dr. Simoncini. Patricia flew to Rome to see Dr. Simoncini. He immediately knew what, what it was. There was no hesitation on his part. He was um, very um, professional, very positive. He started doing injections, not only around my eye, but under my chin. Injections of what exactly? The sodium, baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate. Right. Because a tumor, it's, it's still here to a certain degree, but anyway, the, uh, he injected those areas. So you also did injections on, on the eyelid? All, all around. All around. All around. Uh -huh. And uh, he would do, he would inject it and then he would fill up the vial at least three times, flood the area. I mean, I looked like a little balloon, a lopsided balloon by the time he got done. But I could tell that it was something positive. And so, um, I was getting immediate results, which I had to come back home after the month, continued injecting myself with solutions, and uh, finally it started to go down, and it doesn't mean that I don't have cancer elsewhere, which I need treatment for, and hopefully I can, through this seminar, find somebody. What would you say it's needed? at this point? Um, what should happen according to your, your... Well, it would be nice to have a clinic that would be able to honor this. Of course, all you're doing is a metabolic bal balancing. You're not calling it cancer treatment. But in the meantime, uh, what gave you the, the strength to continue on your own um, like that? Because he was so positive and aggressive, 
and I knew I had to continue, I learned to do the injections myself. So I've actually done them in the roof of my mouth. I've done them all around my eye. Wow. Um, by yourself? By myself. I had to learn because nobody would even touch Even my dentist wouldn't even return my calls when I asked for help. I couldn't get help anywhere. Everybody's afraid. Right. So I thought, if I don't take this in my own hands, I won't survive. This is John Blankenship in Houston, Texas. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in about August of 2007, and I proceeded to do all the classic evaluations that the medical industry put you through. Uh, they did a biopsy and later on scheduled me for uh, radical prostatectomy. And I looked on the internet and saw what they were going to do and the fact that I was going to be incontinent and I rejected it out of hand. Uh, the whole time they were, they were trying to sell this operation to me and it just didn't feel right. They ran me through the mill and, and I had to sign a paper that I would accept chemotherapy and also radiation treatment in the event that the radical prostatectomy did not cure my cancer problem. Sometime in early January, I was on the internet and uh, I came across Dr. Tulio Simicini's uh, website and I was amazed at the protocol that he suggested and also I was amazed by his uh, belief that cancer was a fungus. I read over and over and over it and it just made sense to me. And toward the end of January, I called him and made arrangements to go to Rome for treatment. And I arrived in Rome on the 1st of February, and on Monday, on the 4th of February, we put a catheter in. I did eight bicarbonate of soda treatments over there. It took about an hour for treatment, and the only effects that I had the last two days of the treatment, I got a little bit weak, but he gave me eight treatments. So I flew back to the United States with the catheter in place, and 10 days later, my wife had been taught how to do the uh, infusion and started on a treatment schedule of six days of infusions and then six days off the rest. And we did four or five of these cycles. I just took on uh, Tuesday, the 26th of August, 2008, a uh, ultrasound examination of my prostate and apparently uh, the doctor I consulted with him and he said he couldn't find anything. He wrote a report to that effect and I faxed the report to Dr. Simicini today and he was delighted with the results. He said it's all gone. So uh, according to this uh, ultrasound scan, your cancer is gone? Yes, sir. Can you believe that? I absolutely believe it. I believe everything that Dr. Simicini says. He's a genius. He's a renaissance man. So, even before you find out about Simicini, it seems to me like the real turning point was when you rejected the orthodox process. Is that correct? I rejected it out of hand because I knew that as soon as they started cutting on it, those little cells were going to run all over my body, and six months later, they were going to be popping up and gross all over my body and I knew that because the fungus starts to run and hide and it finds the best place to hide and receive nutrition and his treatment sort of kills all of that because there's an overabundance of sodium bicarbonate in the treatment and it's totally while you're being treated your blood is becoming saturated with it so it kills the fungus in route to wherever it's going so it not only kills the fungus at the tumor all the fungus gets away, is killed in the alphabet. Are you a doctor, John? No. No. I can read and I can understand and no one else has made sense to me except Dr. C. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. To John. Thank you. Hey.
My name is Dragan Mishic and I come from Perth, Western Australia. So what brought you all the way from Australia to Perth? <laughs> because in Australia, in, especially in Perth, they couldn't cure my uh, basal cell carcinoma and melanoma. I had two operations and many, many treatments with liquid nitrogen. But they you know, completely damaged my skin. And uh, what did you do after that? I applied the same therapy that Dr. Simoncini described in his book, uh, Cancer is Fungus. I applied that for about, you know, a few weeks, few weeks, and... Uh, and the cancer is gone? Totally gone. For the first time, you know, I feel, you know, cured and uh, free, and I feel back, I feel like I got my life uh, back again. In 2002, Annalisa Grillo was diagnosed with a brain tumor, called astrocytoma. She underwent surgery, followed by chemo and radio cycles, only to see a relapse in 2006. The consequences of the second surgery were even worse. After four cycles of sodium bicarbonate, the RMI test showed a small reduction in the tumoral mass. A second set of four cycles reduced the mass of the tumor even further. The last 14 cycles, between March and August 2007, managed to clear the tumor completely. Permanendo ad oggi soltanto un piccolo esito di tipo cicatriziale postumo dell'intervento. In November 2006, Mr. Giordano underwent surgery to remove a papilloma from his bladder. In March 2007, the cancer had returned. But this time, Mr. Giordano refused surgery and tried Dr. Simoncini's therapy instead. In 2002, Alessandro found he had a melanoma on his neck. Instead of undergoing surgery, he tried the iodine tinder applications under the direction of Dr. Simoncini. Same story for Gemma, who had a basalioma on her chest and cured it with the same procedure. American patients who choose to follow Dr. Simacini therapy seem to find a different set of problems. The last testimony is from someone who found himself on both sides of the fence at the same time, a doctor who got cancer. Mi chiamo Carmelo Lombardo. Di mestiere? Mestiere faccio il medico. After the removal of a primary tumor in the bowel, Dr. Lombardo learned he had some metastasis in his liver. Just before undergoing the liver surgery, he learned that he had also developed a metastasis in each of his lungs. Quando sono stato operato era mia carica, l'ho detto, però pensavo di avere se non un anno e mezzo, due anni, forse. 
After returning home, Dr. Lombardo found out about Dr. Simoncini's therapy and chose to use the ports that had been prepared for the chemo to introduce the bicarbonate solution instead. Quindi lei aveva il port per la chemio e invece l'ha usato per infilare il bicarbonato. Il port dove ce l'aveva esattamente? Il porto che ce l'ho all'altezza della seconda costola, nella seconda costola precisamente hanno ingannato la carotide interna e raggiunge la cava superiore. After a few cycles of sodium bicarbonate, a CAT scan revealed both tumors had disappeared from his lungs. Con il ramme fatto con mezzo di contrasto e senza contrasto non si apprezzano lesioni né di tipo primitivo né di tipo secondario. Lei ha un messaggio da dare ai suoi colleghi medici? Sicuramente, io dico una frase che dico sempre, la verità a volte è davanti no, al nostro, alla punta del nostro naso, ma è talmente vicina che non riusciamo a metterla a fuoco, quindi a vederla. There are many, many types of uh, candida. We can say that all the fungi that, that uh, invade the human body are candida. When we say Aspergillum, Fumicatus, Parapsilosis, Japonium, they, are, they differ for 2-3%. Every fungus is basically Candida. So we say Candida because usually the fungus makes white colonies. This is the first um, observation. Secondly, uh, we, 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 we don't need to have Candida in the body. When uh, people say Candida st is, uh, uh, stays, stays in the body and then uh, starts, starts overgrowing. No, this is not true. Candida has to be out of our body. This is not true because it's a killer. This is the, the, the most powerful predator uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the world because uh, fungi and Candida can uh, parasite every living being. This is the connecting point that lacked to Darwin in the evolutionary uh, theory. He didn't know what is between the cells and the animals. Fungi are the, another uh, range and uh, it is the connecting point. It, it starts like, uh, like um, cells and, and it, it, it wants to become uh, an animal. Then, when I was uh, in the oncologic wards, uh, I was following alternative doctor, carer, think, uh, people that thought differently. And uh, I was used to cure psoriasis uh, with the iodine tincture because I figured out that it was uh, uh, a fungus. So, in a moment, in a moment of desperation, uh, I thought uh, psoriasis unknown and curable illness. It's a fungus. Maybe I can cure it. I can fix it. Maybe another uh, illness, cancer, unknown and curable illness is a fungus. I made the syllogies. And I started right away to cure people when I was in the at the university. A patient, a young patient, 11 years old, in coma since 15 days, and I was doing the history with the mother, where I was writing this with the mother, she told me, doctor, I will pay uh, everything to speak with my son before he, uh, he dies. I know that he has to die. I prescribed the sodium bicarbonate 50% solution at uh, 11.30 o'clock, 11 11.30, and when I got back in the afternoon at 7, 7.30, all the world was crying because uh, uh, th this guy was speaking with her, her mother. So I, I immediately I understood that, that that was one of the first cases. So the syllogism, psoriasis is a fungus, is the same as the, 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 the tumor, fungus. The, the, this is the connection that uh, led me to the, to the truth. And then I started curing people and since uh, 30 years, since more than 30 years. Yes, because uh, when it is, uh, it, it, the size is like a, a mouse, like a, a, a dog into a, the, the body of a, of a patient, how can you get rid of it? It's very powerful because it, it, it is like a, a biological glue. It can, it can take roots everywhere, everywhere. So it is very, very, very powerful. But uh, we have the chains that the sodium bicarbonate can disaggregate it.
And when the, 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 the animal, let's say the animal, starts disaggregating, the human cells, the white cell the, 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 of the hum, immune system of the human body can grab and kill the separated cells of the cancer. This is the secret. If you put in touch sodium bicarbonate with the, sodium, with, with the fungus, usually in, uh, in a few days you can get rid of it. I remember I was in, uh, in Istanbul, I was called by by a politician, one of the the, the, the secretary of the main, one of the, the the two main parties, and the, the first time that I went to the hospital, everybody looked at me like a dog, because there were professors, uh, doctors, oncologists. Who is this this uh, new man that comes from Rome? So we started doing treatment in the colon. Is the one that I showed in the, in, the, in the conference. We started. I started to treat it in the colon with the colonoscopy. The tumor was uh, about uh, uh, six, seven centimeters, eight, maybe ten. So my big tumor. After the day after, when I went to the hospital, the hospital, everybody was doing like Allah. What happened? Because they made a colonoscopy before I, wa I, I was go uh, before I went there because they want to demonstrate that I was a fake. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, what, what is doing? What is he doing? But at that moment, that day, the God beat, beat, uh, uh, beat them, them very strongly because when they did the, 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 the colonoscopy, the tumor in one day shrunk uh, like that. It was maybe one one fourth, one one fifth of the the, the, the previous uh, size. So sodium bicarbonate is very is very effective. There are there are cancers that you can reach direct directly. You can get rid of them in a few weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Let's say breast cancer, um, neck uterus cancer, and. Uh, and uh, bladder cancer, I saved many people that had to be, many patients that had to be cut off uh, of, of the bladder. And uh, for, for, the skin can, for the skin cancer, you can use iodine tincture, as I, as I did for the, for the uh, um, psoriasis. Then you have tumors, very difficult tumors, like the mesothelioma or me pleural metastasis that usually have 0% survival, survival if in, the, in conventional oncology, they, I get rid of them in a couple of weeks uh, almost totally because they cannot escape in the pleural spa space. There are other tumors that are difficult to cure. Bone has no circulation, very difficult to reach. Esophagus, esophageal cancer is very difficult. Plurimetastatized uh, tumors are very difficult to treat, to treat even though I could fix even uh, a, few um, uh, a small amount of, of these cases, but it is better to start as soon as it, it, it is possible. But usually, anyway, sodium bicarbonate helps, helps, helps because the is a very big poison against the fungi. Because uh, I thought that psoriasis, I could, I could uh, cure psoriasis with the iodine tincture, but this is an external uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. So I thought, but what can I do with the, uh, with the uh, fungus when it is inside? But since I was working and I had my diploma in the, the oncology, pediatric oncology ward, we were used to give sodium bicarbonate to eliminate the trash of the baby. You see, mm -hmm. the babies went suck. The, the boob, the, the breast, sorry, when they yeah. suck the breast, uh, they get, can get uh, uh, trash. And if you apply sodium bicarbonate in three, four, five days, it disappears. So I thought maybe if I apply sodium bicarbonate inside, I can get rid of the cancer. And I start with the one of the first patients with the localization of the lymphoma in the brain, the one that uh, woke up after seven, uh, seven hour, eight hours uh, from the coma. So I figured out to use sodium bicarbonate because I used it against fungi in, in, the, in, the, in the universe, at the university. So, and I, I immediately perceived it was the right way. Uh, we, we have to, to, to look 
at the at the patients, at the at the people, at the illnesses, we, we have to look as a phenomena, not like analytical uh, problems. We cannot continue to analyze in the laborat laboratory in the in the world. No, we have to see to look at the life of the, the people individual. because the real cause of the illnesses is the environment, stress, psychological problems, diet, but very, very, very little. Because of the diet, and they say all stupid is in all over the world. Fungus doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't care about the sugar, meat, dairy, no. no. This is just a stupid tale that runs all over the world. So, we have to focus on the life. In other words, how a, a, a person, how a patient loses his energy. Because if you, you continue to lose energy more than you can uh, recall, <laughs> you, 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 you get ill. So you have to balance your, you have to, to think about your life. When the do doctor comes, it is too late many times. 90% of the illnesses are not, uh, cannot be cured by the doctors. So, be careful, because the medicine made, the conventional medicine made a, a good job until the 60s, because we need uh, of the antibiotics, also, also we need the symptomatic uh, drugs, when we, somebody has a pain, he has a, uh, we need uh, uh, surgeons, uh, traumatology, anesthesiology, we need everything, but we are stuck off now because we are, we are in the mud now. So we cannot wait one millennium to discover new things. And also, we have also to say that in the alternative fields there are many people that repeat, 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 but the only thing they, 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 they need to do to focus the cause of the, of the illnesses. Otherwise we can speak the diet, look at the cancer, uh, sugar feeds the cancer, feeds the cancer. Uh, meat is worse, is, is, is bad for cancer. But why? Why? I, I, I gave, I give to my patients tons of white sugar. This is the best. Because it gives energy and the patient doesn't have to spend energy. So they say completely, completely, like the ARA, pa -pa, pa -pa, pa -pa, three ARAs make a rule. This is not true. We have to, to uh, uh, we don't have to make people prisoner. They have to think of their own health by ruling their life. Fungus is a predator. So the predator has uh, uh, someone or something to eat. Okay? We are predators. Okay? If you eat a chicken, if we, we eat a chicken, we eat the chicken. We don't eat what the chicken eats. We don't eat grains, worms, something like that. We eat the chicken. Fungus, the fungus eats the patient, the tissue of the patient. It doesn't eat what the patient eats. It's a predator. So, it doesn't care what the patient eats. The, the, uh, the more the patient is starving, the uh, uh, more he's uh, aggressive. It, it, it becomes more aggressive because when people, patients, don't eat properly and abundantly, they get weaker. At first, they gain somehow health and um, a smart in aptitude, but after that, they they uh, smash down. When I see people coming from uh, USA especially, where there are, where fanatics are, they are vegan, vegetable, no meat, da, 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 I say immediately, I saw a few months, a few weeks, a few months ago, a woman that came to my, to, to Rome, she was like that. What are you doing? I was doing, I don't say what, ta, 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 diet eat whatever, I told her. Stop following stupidities.
Candida is uh, all over the world. There are, for instance, uh, it is, uh, there is a big uh, and, and total pollution in the world. I just tell you something. In Japan, uh, we have uh, 15 million people with the athlete foods. Athlete's food. Mm -hmm. That means this is a fungus. I don't know, maybe more than 50, 60% of the women have candida, the trash on the vagina. So, pff, worse than that, nothing. So, it is complete. There is a big pollution. See, if somebody gives you the bread or the vegetables in a, in a bag, he has a psoriasis, you take it, you touch it yourself, you are lost. You can ingest it, breathe it, touch it. It is all over the world, but usually, if the epithelia are uh, are healthy, the candida just can pass through, and she, she, it, it, candida cannot uh, attack the epithelium when it, it, it is uh, when it is uh, healthy. When it is not healthy, the candida can attack the epithelium, mm -hmm. and uh, such as the bronchia, the tongue, the vagina. If there is the, uh, some irritation and so on. When the weakness of the organism is uh, more advanced, the candida can take roots. Otherwise, could be uh, expelled immediately. But when this candida starts take, taking roots and it, when it goes beyond the epithelia, candida can form the cancer. Look, for instance, the breast cancer, the cause of the breast cancer is the entering of candida through the nipple. It's an external illness. So many times when the babies uh, suck the, the nipple of the mother, they irritate it, see if there is a, the, 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 um, the fungus, the fungus enters. By the time it becomes cancer. I saw many, many women with the cancer after uh, feeding uh, people. So, it is an external um, illness. This is a, the, the irritation is one, ca one case, but the, the first, one of the first causes, concomitant cause of the cancer are the medicaments, drugs, that make the organism weaker. Drugs for the diabetes, for heart failures, or uh, hypertension. These are the real Concom biggest concomitant cause. This is the line of the the the, the, the commerce of the, uh, the, 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 tr the 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 selling of the f drugs since uh, 60 years. This is the line of the increasing of the tumor. It's a parallel because there is a concomitant. They are concomitant causes. So, first of all, avoid people have have to rule their life. They have to avoid to take too many, too much, too many medicaments, and they have to to even uh, make gym, sport to reinforce themselves, mm -hmm. to eat properly, not too many fats, too saturated fats, and then uh, the lifestyle is important. But the, when something happens, the first thing to do is to escape from the oncological uh, hospital because they have no idea what is the cancer. They start to promise, to promise what if they have no idea. Understand me? Because uh, uh, they just repeat a litany that is dead. The story of the cell madness just is a stupidity that at the end of the 800, the, the, the for last uh, century was made by the zoologists, uh, I don't know who, zoologists, biologists. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, it is very sad to see that today, nowadays, people continue to say this stupid theory. Unbelievable. It seems to, to, to be at, at the time of Galeno, when there was the, the, the black bile, white, bile, red bile, yellow bile, and uh, they bleed everything, they do massacre every, everybody. Today we are in a medieval state. Yes, it's very difficult to get rid of a candida with the diet because uh, it, it, candida doesn't care about the diet. 
<laughs> this is, it is a false theory. So of course, it's if somebody doesn't eat the sugar for one year, then in one moment start eating sugar, it can feel a little bit uh, discomfortable because the enzymes are not ready. But if somebody starts drinking, eating sugar, he gets used, he can eat one kilo of sugar per day. Make continuous sacrifices. You cannot be free. No, it is very, very heavy to do what I say, but you have to be free to choose whatever you want, but you have to balance what you need uh, it, it compared with your life. For instance, if you go dancing during the night until 6 o'clock, there is a risk of a brain tumor. This is, there is no diet, there is no, no environment, there is no psychological problem. Ju you, there is just a problem of lack of energy. You have to rule yourself. You have to sleep, you have to, to, to eat properly. Properly means to avoid saturated fats. These are the enemies in the, in the, in the world, in the diet. Only saturated fats, because they make the glue in the vessel. When the vessel on the, the circulation become, become um, smaller and closer, so people don't have the, it's not, are not smart, are not, uh, they have no energy in their brain. So everything looks uh, worse. So it is just to be, to be honest with with uh, them, with with uh, uh, the your life. There are many works, officially official work papers, that say they speak about acidity. So they are making. Now, now the top research in oncology is the, to, to fight against the acidity. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, this is a, this is false uh, route. But uh, in the meantime, they, they investigate uh, the way the anti-acidic drugs um, work against cancer. At the end, they say the most powerful uh, anti-acidic drug against cancer is the sodium bicarbonate. Pfft, why? Because they think to use sodium bicarbonate as an anti-acidic substance, but it is it, it works because it's antifungal drug. So they don't know. It, the next step will be maybe it works because it, it has different property. A different property, but they need time because the intelligence of the big scientists is very slow, very slow because they need hundred years to understand one thing, simple, simple thing. Because there is, there is the power, there is the, there are the politicians, there are the the the, 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 the the dishonesty. You know, human being. I have colleagues that do something for me. For instance, the selective arteriography in Rome the catheterization of the cavities. I have, uh, I cooperate with clinics, for instance, in uh, Serbia, Belgrade, where I can operate women or men with, for the soft tissues, small breast cancer and irrigation of the cavities. I have, uh, I can do the catheterization of the, of the artery, of the brain, carotids, that is very, it's risky, it is very complicated uh, in Buenos Aires. So people come to me and I send them where I can do my procedure. Mm. But everything is secret because, uh, you know, the medical association are like, uh, you know, the, the round of the, the hell. In 2004, Patricia Gordon found out she had cancer. They told me I had lymphoma. She set up an immediate uh, an appointment to have the top palate of my mouth removed. And they were Patricia refused to undergo surgery and started a long quest for a different solution, going from doctor to doctor. But it was all in vain, and after three years she realized she was just going around in circles. Over $2,000 for a PET scan and it showed up a, a mass in my lung, my right lung, about the size of a medium potato. In the lung? In the right lung, yes. 
by this time, there was a tumor that started growing up around my right eye, and it basically was forcing my eyeball out to the right side of my head. So how did you find out about uh, Dr. Simoncini? I heard this radio show. It was the Robert Scott Bell radio show. Okay. He talked about his alternative treatments and how the success rate was so great. And so when I went to the website, I immediately saw this is exactly what was happening to me because I experienced the white tumors coming down from the roof of my mouth and I got a hold of Dr. Simoncini. Patricia flew to Rome to see Dr. Simoncini. He immediately knew what, what it was. There was no hesitation on his part. He was um, very um, professional, very positive. He started doing injections, not only around my eye, but under my chin. Injections of what exactly? The sodium, baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate. Right. Because a tumor, it's, it's still here to a certain degree, but anyway, the, uh, he injected those areas. So he also did injections on, on the eye? All around. All around. All around. Uh -huh. And uh, he would do, he would inject it and then he would fill up the vial at least three times, flood the area. I mean, I looked like a little balloon, a lopsided balloon by the time he got done. But I could tell that it was something positive. And so um, I was getting immediate results, which I had to come back home after the month, continued injecting myself with solutions. And uh, finally it started to go down. And it doesn't mean that I don't have cancer elsewhere, which I need treatment for. And hopefully I can, through this seminar, find somebody. What would you say it's needed at this point? Um, what should happen according to your, your... Well, it would be nice to have a clinic that would be able to honor this. Of course, all you're doing is a metabolic bal balancing. You're not calling it cancer But treatment. in the meantime, uh, what gave you the strength to continue on your own um, like that? Because he was so positive and aggressive, and I knew I had to continue. I learned to do the injections myself, so I've actually done in the roof of my mouth, I've done all around my eye. Wow. Uh, by yourself? By myself. I had to learn because nobody would even touch, even my dentist wouldn't even return my calls when I asked for help. I couldn't get help anywhere. Everybody's afraid. Right. So I thought, if I don't take this in my own hands, I won't survive. John Blankenship in Houston, Texas. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in about August of 2007, and I proceeded to do all the classic evaluations that the medical industry put you through. Uh, they did a biopsy and later on scheduled me for uh, radical prostatectomy. And I looked on the internet and saw what they were going to do and the fact that I was going to be incontinent and I rejected it out of hand. Uh, the whole time they were they were trying to sell this operation to me and it just didn't feel right. They ran me through the mill and, and I had to sign a paper that I would accept chemotherapy and also radiation treatment in the event that the radical prostatectomy did not cure my cancer problem. Sometime in early January, I was on the internet and uh, I came across Dr. Tulio Simicini's uh, website and I was amazed at the protocol that he suggested and also I was amazed by his uh, belief that cancer was a fungus. I read over and over and over it and it just made sense to me. And toward the end of January, I called him and made arrangements to go to Rome for treatment. And I arrived in Rome on the 1st of February, and on Monday, on the 4th of February, we put a catheter in. I did eight bicarbonate of soda treatments over there. It took about an hour for treatment, and the only effects that I had the last two days of the treatment, I got a little bit weak, but he gave me eight treatments. So I flew back to the United States with the catheter in place, and 10 days later, my wife had been taught how to do the uh, infusion and started on a treatment schedule of six days of infusions and then six days off of rest. And we did four or five.
five of these cycles. I just took on uh, Tuesday, the uh, 26th of August, 2008, a uh, ultrasound examination of my prostate, and apparently uh, the doctor, I consulted with him, and he said he couldn't find anything. He wrote a report to that effect, and I faxed the report to Dr. Simoncini today, and he was delighted with the results. He said it's all gone. So, uh, according to this uh, ultrasound scan, your cancer is gone? Yes, sir. Can you believe that? I absolutely believe it. I believe everything that Dr. Simicini says. He's a genius. He's a renaissance man. So, even before you find out about Simicini, it seems to me like the real turning point was when you rejected the orthodox process. Is that correct? I rejected it out of hand because I knew that as soon as they started cutting on it, those little cells were going to run all over my body, and six months later they were going to be popping up and engrossed all over my body, and I knew that. Because the fungus starts to run and hide, and it finds the best place to hide and receive nutrition. And his treatment sort of kills all of that because there's an overabundance of sodium bicarbonate in the treatment, and it's totally while you're being treated, your blood is becoming saturated with it. So it kills the fungus in route to wherever it's going. So it not only kills the fungus at the tumor, all the fungus that gets away is killed in the alphabet. Are you a doctor, John? No. no. I can read and I can understand and no one else has made sense to me except Dr. <laughs> Thank you, to John. Thank you. Hey. I have two diplomas, philosophy, doctor in uh, medis, doc, medical doctor, oncologist, internal medicine, specialist, but I don't like to see people die. This, but no, you have to do because this is the protocol, protocol of the cemetery, the protocols for the domestic cemetery. Bah, the system is uh, so oppressive, so false. No, so oppressive, so false. It is li like an army. They are like an arm, they are bandits, bandits, completely, not the, the, the poor doctors that don't understand anything, that they, go, they, they just obey, they are, they are uh, taught to, to, to do to only prescription. But uh, the, 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 the top level scientists, they are dishonest, because they know, yeah. You know, one uh, friend of mine, doctor, told me, maybe you will have three Nobel Prizes. Because usually when a new a revolutionary theory is fought so, so hard, uh, and it always happens for any discovery, such as penicillin, uh, vaccine, uh, vitamin C, the last is, uh, is Barry Marshall that discovered the Hel Helicobacter pylori was banned at the 10 years. Mm -hmm. it is, this is a rule. If somebody has a good idea, a real revolutionary true idea, is cut off. Hang this is, the, this is, the, this is a, a certificate of my, my truth. This is that. So I, 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 I it, it's normal, and usually Western countries are more corrupted than the Eastern or poor countries. But everywhere there are where there are the where the the the, the medical association are, it's very difficult to say new uh, new things, new theories, because there is the power. So. The medical association are like the the Santufizio. You know what is a Santufizio? Is the is the tribunal of the Jesuits against the other religious? 
the, 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 the Jesuits were the, the priests that burned uh, Giordano Bruno. You remember Giordano Bruno? He's a philosopher, priest, a philosopher that say, said that maybe there are other other uh, uh, world, uh, world, uh, world, don't you say other world? Yes, in the in the universe. Maybe we can reach God by by ourselves. Oh, they cut him off because he was thinking by himself. We are uh, in, in the, we are worse than the medio medieval age. So that was one thousand five hundred is the, the beginning of the Renaissance. We are worse because the weapons. The, 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 the power of the information that uh, the, the ruler have now is in, incredible. The single man is just a small, a small cat, a small animal in a world of, of, uh, of a powerful man. This is the system. Yes. That's why the cancer was not discovered, because we have to break, to, to smash down the, the system. We are, here we have a medieval system, but our mind is uh, in the future. So we are like a prisoner here to email me and ask me for uh, advice. Maybe it is better to email me and ask me for uh, advice. <laughs>